Hey everybody. With Windows 10's and the support date getting closer and closer, there's a looming question out there for those who resell and refurbish PCs. Let's say you have a computer that's, I don't know, six, seven years old, and it does not meet the minimum requirements to install Windows 11, also known as the Microsoft Elite Class minimum requirements around for Windows 11. That's why I call them here for pretty obvious reasons. Last year, I uploaded a similar video, and back then the verdict was a strong if it's your computer or if it's one you plan to work on and support, by all means go ahead. But if it's a computer that you are selling to someone you don't know who may never return with that computer, wouldn't suggest it. Now today, my opinion is similar to that. Now I can say though, as Windows 10's and a support date gets closer and closer, I mean, if I have a computer sitting around that would run Windows 11 okay and actually do basic things like web browsing and stuff relatively well, at that point, yes, I may put Windows 11 on a thing, even though it does not meet the elite class requirements. But even nowadays, I mean, for example, I got a stack of Octoplex 390s back here I'm going to be refurbishing really soon. I just got to order some SSDs for them. And my original plan was to put Windows 10 on the things but the thing is Windows 10 is not going to have too much more support also Windows 10 is not going to be receiving any more features it's only getting security patches and that's it and once we get into the fall of 2025 that's it unless Microsoft decides to extend support for Windows 10 which who knows it could happen like they did with Windows XP now the thing is, when you install Windows 11 on a system that does not meet your elite class requirements, Microsoft is not going to support you with, um, let's say, for example, if you were, I guess you were to call them for support about something on a system not working, they're not going to support you because the machine does not meet their requirements for Windows 11. Now chances are, in many cases, um, the computer will run Windows 11 quite well. Even if it's an older computer from like let's say 2010, for example, I got the Cuckoo Plexi sitting over here. It's got an AMD Phenom 2 6 core, 1045T CPU, 8 gigs of RAM. It has an NVIDIA GeForce GT 640 graphics card. It's got a 240 gigabyte or 256 gigabyte SATA solid state drive, and the key thing is that solid state drive. Um, that really makes a difference in performance versus a conventional hard disk drive of Windows 10 and Windows 11. Matter of fact, I think Windows 11 should actually require you to use a solid state drive. And I think newer builds on Windows 10, like 20H2 and newer, should also require use of an SSD for adequate usable performance. So, we have this computer that's from 2010, roughly. The hardware is roughly from 2010, socket AM3. Non UEFI BIOS, so no secure boot, no TPM 2.0, none of that. But <laughs> I'm gonna spin the camera around. I just got finished doing a different video, and you can see that we are indeed running Windows 11 on this thing, and it runs it quite well. So that's why I say time and time again. Those Elite Class requirements for Windows 11 are utter garbage. That's why I call them Elite Class. It's like as if Microsoft reserved its new Windows operating system for the most elitist of computers out there. Now, the funny thing is, you could have a 2017-era gaming system with 32 gigs of RAM and just, I mean, all the bells and whistles, but because of that Ryzen first-gen CPU, it won't meet the elite class requirements, but yet you could have some cheap end piece of crap laptop that's sold at Walmart right now with a Celeron in it, four gigs of RAM, uh, maybe 128 gig SSD since they're generally putting SSDs and everything now. You could have some 
craptastic laptop from Walmart that will meet the elite class requirements, but yet performance wise it will be absolutely terrible. Yet this high end gaming machine from twenty seventeen won't meet the elite class requirements, which is absolutely ridiculous. And and in cases like that, let's say if you have a Ryzen first gen or for example a Ryzen five twenty four hundred G system. You know, systems like that I probably would just say the heck with it and put Windows 11 on the thing. But that's the thing. That's, that's kind of... That's really more of your own decision to make. And the thing is, with systems that do not meet the Elite Class requirements, you may run into some issues with drivers and stuff like that. Now, generally, the drivers that are supplied via Windows Update, those work fine for the most part. But... So I've had two issues, two known issues to date on systems with Windows 11 that do not meet the Elite Class requirements. For one would be my Mid-Tower Lux system. Had an issue with the graphics driver. Now the, this is kind of a gray area because let's be honest, the graphics card in that system is the uh, Radeon RX 550, which is not the newest out there by any means, but it could easily be installed in a system that would otherwise meet the Elite Class requirements. I mean, the only issue the Mid-Tower Lux has with not meeting the Elite Class system requirements uh, set forth by Microsoft for Windows 11 is its Ryzen 7 1700X. I mean, I could upgrade the CPU in that system to a newer one that meets the requirements, and that system would be what I call Elite Class certified for Windows 11. But yet, it would still have have still had that graphics driver issue. The graphics driver issue was resolved simply by manually downloading a new driver from AMD's website. I can't remember if it was actually one that was specified for Windows 11 or Windows 10, but I downloaded the latest driver that was available at the time. It was earlier this year, and it's been working fine ever since. Case number two would be the system I just showed you, the QQ Plexi. Um, had an issue with its networking driver. The driver that was supplied out of the box for Windows 11 didn't get along with Windows 11. I would plug in a network cable and the computer would blue screen. It would crash on the spot. And if the network cable was left plugged in the next time the system restarted, it would crash during the boot up process. It would crash and blue screen and restart. But if I unplugged that network cable, the system would boot up, get into the desktop just fine. Once I ruled it out as the network um, adapter causing a problem, I downloaded a new driver from Realtek's website and that cleared that up and now this system runs Windows 11 just fine. So, moral of the story is, if you're running Windows 11 on a system that does not meet the minimum requirements, um, you may run into an issue um, with compatibility with drivers. For a technician, it'll be a pretty easy thing to figure out. Um, but the thing is, at least what I've noticed thus far with Windows 11, is let's say you use Rufus or you use some method to bypass the Elite Class checks, as I call them, to install the OS, install Windows 11 on a system that does not meet the minimum requirements, and everything runs fine. The only thing, though, is while the computer will receive security updates, driver updates, and stuff like that, Microsoft is quietly denying you access to the next feature build. Now, if the feature build only provided feature updates for the lifespan of Windows 11, and we're talking like 10 years on average for Windows, um, wouldn't be too big of an issue, but the issue is Microsoft only s supports a feature build of Windows for like two years, something like that. Windows 11 21 H2 will be ending support later this year, for example. So that's kind of an issue, um, at least from my findings as of now. In order to step up to the next feature build of Windows 11, you have to manually do upgrade installations to the next feature build. And that could cause you to run into a problem. So, that problem would be, again, the driver issues. Because the thing is, 
To my understanding, when you do an in-place upgrade of Windows, it doesn't import the drivers off the previous build of Windows. Now, I can't understand certain on that, but there's a chance that when you upgrade from an old feature build to a new feature build, um, that driver issue could come back, and that could be an issue, let's say. Um, that's probably why Microsoft does not, at least as of now, does not automatically supply feature builds or you know, feature updates to systems not meeting the elite class requirements. But who knows, it might change. Um, it remains to be seen. What I may do later this year is on my Windows 11 test rig, which also does not meet the elite class requirements, install Windows 11 21H2 on that system, and we'll see if it will accept a feature update when 21H2 ends support because we don't really want to have unsupported builds of Windows out there running but needless to say I'm kind of guilty of myself I mean my T-Box systems I think are running older builds of Windows 10 because the reason why I don't upgrade them to the newest build of Windows 10 is because the newer build of Windows 10 is just absolutely horrifically slow on the systems but those systems are kind of stripped down. They only do really basic stuff. They really, they literally just run either a web browser or they run Windows Media Center. But anyway, so I guess to wrap this up, um, as of to date, we're at the, near the end of May 2023 when I'm actually shooting this video. As of now, um, as far as Windows 11 goes on computers that do not meet the minimum requirements, if you're looking to sell a PC, it may be a good idea to put Windows 10 on that system, but you could also offer the option to the customer buying the computer to install Windows 11, but have them sign an agreement that the computer that they're that the computer they're buying technically does not meet Windows 11 minimum requirements, but it most likely could run Windows 11 anyway, and for any technical support issues they will need to bring the computer back to you, the person who serviced it, for support. In other words, Microsoft will not support them. So, I don't know. That's just kind of my thoughts on the matter. So, yes, with Windows 11 on systems that do not meet the minimum requirements, sure, you could, in fact, run into compatibility issues um, with drivers and things like that. And at least from my experience, it's relatively rare. Um, I have actually put Windows 11 on a handful of machines that don't meet the minimum requirements and I haven't sold any computers as of today that don't meet the minimum requirements but I have a handful of machines sitting around that I've test ran Windows 11 on and haven't run into any issues so of course again the Mid-Tower Lux and the Plexi were the two um, cases where I did have some sort of problem with Windows 11 on a system that does not meet the Windows 11 Elite Class Mint Requirements. So, anyways, hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video from Cuckoo Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to tick the bell so we get notified of new video posts. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. And share this video as well as the channel with your friends and get the word out. Also, I have a second channel that's Comp MTDX. Over there you'll find videos about thunderstorms and weather, cycling, and videos about me personally. Feel free to subscribe over there as well if you like. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for your support.